Our second guest is on the line right now. You guys know him as the Chicago play-by-play guy. We know him as a fellow analyst, a broadcaster, Mr. Chuck Swirsky. What's going on, Chuck? I'm doing well, thank you. We are good. How, how's your family doing right now with uh, everything going on with COVID-19? Well, fortunately, they're healthy. Thank you for asking. And, um, you know, like everyone else, we just, you know, are staying home, staying safe. Um, you know, just going out for the essentials of uh, grocery shopping but for the most part we're playing uh, a lot of board games watching binge watching and uh, playing cards <laughs> very exciting life but we, <laughs> you know what i mean you have to do what you have to do and so i can completely get it as you guys know and i know there was a story that came out the story came out in chicagoville over there in the chicago bulls nation over there and it, was, it really shook chicago but again there's a, a guy that everybody keeps talking about the lead guy that's going to take over this uh, GM position. What were your thoughts on Gar Foreman getting fired today? Well, I mean, anytime you have a new person taking over, you're going to have to expect changes. And I think, obviously, I mean, if you're going to name a new executive vice president um, who has authority, uh, he's, he's going to be in charge. And that's the job title and description. So really, I mean, when it comes down to it, that's his call. Um, you know, I've been with the Bulls 12 years after leaving the Raptors, and I've seen changes, obviously, not only in the front office, but certainly the coaching staff and whatnot. And this is just the very nature of the business, regardless if it's basketball, football, baseball, hockey. You know, they want to bring in their own people, and you just have to accept it, knowing that, you know, there are a lot of good people, and Gar is one of them, who work extremely hard for the franchise for over 20 years. Chuck, another news bit from the Bulls last week is they hired Nuggets GM Arturis Karnasovas as the executive vice president of basketball operations. Now, with that kind of move, do you think that maybe they'll try to bring in a style similar to what the Nuggets have built? They built a very good team. I think they were the number three seed in the West before the, the shutdown. Do you think they'll probably rebuild in that kind of style, maybe with their types of players, maybe even some of their former players too? Or do you think they may still could operate like the big mantra of Chicago that basketball is? Well, I mean, the answer to your question, I think every roster is different. And, I mean, it took time to build that roster in Denver, and it didn't happen overnight. I think, um, you know, Tim Conley did a fantastic job, along with Arturis uh, and others, with that organization. Uh, But having said that, you know, you have to ascertain what you have as a roster, whether they play together, um, whether they can stay healthy together, which has been obviously a, a huge situation here in Chicago. Um, And on top of that, then you have to understand where you're at cap wise, uh, what you have as far as um, first round picks, second round picks for the next three to five years. So you can, you know, have a a bushel of assets and then go from there. So, you know, for, I, I think I know after hearing this press conference today, and reading in black and white what he wants and the type of team he wants to put on the floor, um, you know, it's very appealing as a fan. Um, and now it's up to him, obviously, to uh, look at the roster and see whether or not they have the pieces here and what add-ons he will make or really what subtractions as well. We are talking to the great play-by-play Chicago Bulls announcer, Mr. Chuck Swirsky. Chuck, my question for you is pretty simple. I mean, the stories were coming out for the last couple of years that Anthony Davis is from Chicago. He got traded to the L.A. Lakers. There are stories coming out in L.A. for the last couple of months that he might not sign that extension because he wants to come home to Chicago. Chicago. What are your thoughts with Anthony Davis possibly coming home to Chicago Bulls? Well, my thoughts are he's, he's under contract with the Lakers, and that's my answer. I mean, you know, that, that, that's the bottom line. He's a member of the LA Lakers. He has a signed contract with the Lakers, and he's playing for the Lakers. Do you think that maybe they could do some kind of sign and trade thing? Because I've always said NBA free agency, it all depends on who these guys want to play with now. It's not really based you, on you as much what? development it, of strategy. I, I don't even get into that because it's a moot point. He, he's a player for the Lakers. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, 
my question also for you is when you look at the Chicago Bulls this year with some of the young players that they have, is there any player that sticks out to you is, that is the leader of the team right now? And do you think that they will build the team around that particular player? Well, again, you know, everything is off the table now with a new VP um, who's running the ball club. So um, how he looks at players, I'm, I'm not sure. I've never met Arturis. He has an excellent reputation, and I'm sure he'll figure things out with his front office. I mean, I was impressed this year with Zach Levine. I love Zach. Um, he, he has a, a – not only has he matured as a player – but also growing into leadership. I mean, we kind of tend to forget he's only 25 years young. He's been in the league, what, seven years or so. So um, to see his growth this year has been magnificent, you know, where he's averaging 25 a game. I mean, his three-point shooting was up. I I think that, uh, you know, well, I know for a fact he's a great teammate in the locker room. Uh, but there are other pieces here that are very intriguing to a new executive vice president of basketball operations. So I'm really, as a fan and as a broadcaster, I'm looking forward to this new regime. In terms of the coach, Jim Boylan, who has done a better job this year, I guess, progressing with these players. They're still obviously not a playoff team, but it's a young team. Do you think that their new GM or new GM, whoever it may be, or uh, Karnasovas as basketball operations president. Do you think he'll they'll hang on to Bol, uh, Bolin as a head coach or Boylan as a head coach, or they maybe might take somebody in from Denver's organization, maybe to rebuild like you that? Know what? I, I I don't know. I don't know what you know. I think uh, he addressed that issue today, saying that he plans to have more talks with the uh, coaching staff and with all the departments with the uh, Bulls. Um, so I again, you know what the, the canvas to me is right now wide open and I don't think anyone knows. And I, I think he has made two hires right now, um, bringing in Donnelly uh, along with uh, Polk uh, to um, run the front office with him. I think obviously the general manager's job is going to be essential. And I think he's going to take a long, hard look at a lot of people there, but un until he gets his staff, I don't think he's going to do anything with the coaching staff until he has all the pieces in place regarding his front office. We are talking to the play-by-play -play of the Chicago Bulls, uh, Chuck Swirsky. Chuck, let me ask you one more question. Zach Levine, you were talking about his leadership, but some of the young players like Kobe White and Laurie, Laurie Markkinen or even Otto Porter Jr. being brought over there from the Wizards, what are your thoughts of the nucleus of this team? I, obviously, they're bringing a new GM and, and they're trying to rebuild right now, but what do you think of the nucleus of this team? Well, I like the nucleus. I, I, I like the fact that they're athletic. I like the fact that um, they can run the floor. I like the fact that they're young and that they're enthusiastic. Um, and, um, you know, the unfortunate thing with this club, as you know, if you follow the Bulls, uh, is that they've been hurt. And they've been hurt for several seasons. And it's very, very difficult to get a handle on – uh, a ball club when you can't play that team on the floor. And that's really something that I think that a lot of Bulls fans would like is, okay, what can we see? Um, can they play together? Is there, you know, is that there that synergy? And until we see them, I mean, it's one thing to play 20, 30, 40 games. It's another to say, all right, you're going to be on the floor together for, let's say, you know, anywhere between 68 to 75 games. Because the days of playing 82 games, uh, only a handful of players do that anymore in the league. But if you can play a solid 70, 75 games, you really get a taste for what your team's all about in the field. Uh, but unfortunately, this team has not been able to do that because of their health. Well, Chuck, before we let you go, we, we've been playing, we started playing this game with all the different analysts that we've uh, interviewed and all the different athletes, former athletes we've we've brought to the show and interviewed. Could we play this game with you? It's called the WWSRN feud. We're going to ask you eight questions. Some of them funny, some of them are weird, but they're, it, they're pretty funny. I want to know, you know, your answers to them. Oh, okay. You ready? You ready, Speedy? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hit the music. Who was, or is your favorite player you played with and interviewed and why? 
the favorite uh, person I've ever interviewed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, there were so many. I'll tell you what. I'm going to say Muhammad Ali. Really? Hmm. Yes. He was. He was. He was great. Uh, he still had his faculties, and he was terrific. And he was uh, not only um, an unbelievable athlete, as we all know, um, but also he uh, had a lot of great substance, and he did it with flair, and he had a wonderful personality. Very interesting. Number two, what player or analyst did you grow up wanting to be and why? Well, I grew up in Seattle. And so you have to understand the Seattle I grew up in, it did not have the Seahawks and did not have the Mariners. And so uh, the Sonics were there. And uh, but also um, they had a minor league hockey team called the Seattle Totems. And probably one of the first people that I heard was Bill Shonley, who later became the voice of the Trailblazers, who was very impactful. And also, uh, I would spend the summers in Baltimore, and uh, there was a TV broadcaster by the name of Vince Bagley on Channel 11, WBAL. And so it was a combination of Vince Bagley, Bill Shonley, Joe Tate of the Cavaliers, and Ernie Harwell, the voice of the Tigers. What is the craziest question someone has asked you in an interview? Um, the craziest question someone has asked me in an interview. It would be, um, uh, do you have any plans to get a toupee? <laughs> <laughs> what coach? And the answer is no. <laughs> I won't say anything. Don't worry, Chuck. You look good, man. You look good. <laughs> Thank you. What coach or analyst did you um, did you hate dealing with most, and why? Well, hate's a strong word, so I don't want to use that word. Uh, what uh, analyst or coach. player or coach? Hmm, wow. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to uh, – honestly, I mean, some are better than others, obviously. I mean, just uh, the human nature of people – uh, some don't enjoy being interviewed, and, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Honestly, uh, if someone doesn't want to talk, I've never had an issue where you kind of push the, you know, push the, the button, so to speak, because I'm not that type, and that's not how I'm wired. So I'm going to just say that, you know, if someone wanted to talk, great. If they didn't, that's great, and I'm not going to get in the debate whether or not they want to give me a 20-second soundbite. Ah, Chuck, you're always playing it safe. Darn. Yep. Well, anyway, guys, well, thank you for um, inviting me. I wish you well. And uh, thank enjoy you. the rest of your night. Thank and, you so uh, much. Take care. Good luck with the show. Thank you.